two men were waiting for me the day I was released from prison. My son was one. And my husband was the other. Their faces, one large and one small, were filled with impatience. And my son was fuming. Have you learned your lesson after five years inside? Eric questioned me. Are you able to get along with others now? Aunt Sophia and I don't like dogs. So you're not allowed to have one anymore. Added my son. I laughed quietly as I considered the absurd reason for my incarceration and the dog I had raised for years that Sophia had thrashed to death. Sure. I then took out two papers. One was a document to break off parental connections. While the other was a divorce agreement. Eric himself came to pick me up the day I was released. My face was pale at the time. And the injuries from other prisoners were still visible on my arms. Which were covered by long sleeves. However. Eric's haughty. Conceited manner persisted. He scowled at me while sporting a pricey watch on his wrist. What caused you to take so long? I've spent the last thirty minutes waiting for you. Half an hour, something I never would have dared to think of in the past. Never in my life had I enjoyed the pleasure of having him wait for me. I used to drop everything and wait outside his office till nightfall. Just to have Eric greet me with. Don't you have anything better to do? Is it really necessary for you to follow me around all day? Now. Though. I just smiled half-heartedly. Sorry to trouble you. As though he wanted to say anything more. Eric opened his mouth. But I had already passed him without even looking at him. When I finally arrived at the car. Sophia's well-known face appeared as the window gently rolled down. You're finally out. Bianca. She remarked with a smile. We've been waiting a long time for you. Eric forbade me from getting out of the car because he was afraid I would suffer from heat stroke due to the extreme heat. You're not angry. Are you? Sophia scowled a little when she saw that I was not answering. Are you still furious about the previous incident? Bianca? I apologize. It nearly bit me once before. She hesitated. I shouldn't have allowed them to beat your dog to death. How absurd. Claiming she was almost attacked by the cute puppy I had chained in the backyard. This pampered princess requires six bodyguards just to go outside. Eric. However. Was always duped by her performance. His scowl deepened at what she said. Are you still harboring resentment? Bianca? I can get you another dog if you're a dog lover. Just then. A little. Enraged head appeared from next to Sophia. It was only a dog. Aunt Sophia was nearly bitten. It was worthy of its demise. As though he were Sophia's biological child and I were the criminal who had taken him away, a sinner condemned to the lowest depths of hell, my beloved son, whom I had carried for ten months, clung to her arm and spoke out against me on her behalf. I looked into his eyes, which were somewhat like mine, and thought, perhaps it's because he looks too much like Eric. Eric's apathy and partiality for Sophia were also entirely inherited. Lucas. Sophia reprimanded softly. She's your mother. You must not speak to her in such a manner. The boy turned his head aside with a contemptuous scowl. I figured he was probably thinking that I wasn't worthy of being called his mother. Especially since I've served time in prison. I couldn't help but chuckle when Eric signaled for me to get inside the car. When a dog meets its owner. It even knows how to wag its tail. However. It appears that our son. Eric. 
has already forgotten who his biological mother is. I spent over a decade pursuing Eric. I pursued him until everyone in the city realized that I was exclusively attracted to Eric and that I loved him. For him. I even disobeyed my parents. Holding on to him like a bitter ghost and never letting go. Eric eventually bowed his head and consented to marry me after his family experienced financial difficulties. The requirement was for my family to support his parents and get them through this difficult time. Even though I knew Eric's dream girl. Sophia. Had his heart. I made my parents agree. And she was Sophia. The illegitimate daughter of the woman who had ruined the marriage of my own parents. I believed that love could gradually soften even the toughest stone. That it could finally be thawed. But Eric proved to be as emotionless and frigid as ice. I attempted to warm him for as long as I could. But all I got in return was shame and humiliation. Later. Eric succeeded in building his family firm on his own. Gaining the admiration and obedience of others who all referred to him as boss. After that. He turned around and left my family in ruins. My parents were imprisoned. And my brother was compelled to escape overseas. If it weren't for the fact that you were pregnant with my child. Bianca. You wouldn't have fared well either. He said. Leaving me by his side while putting on a kind front. After bringing Sophia into his life. He lavished her with luxury and raised her until she lost the attitude of an illegitimate child and turned into a polished, dazzling woman. Sophia, however, also detested me. She made me a pot of dog meat soup and had my beloved dog beaten to death just before I was due. Bianca, since you love dogs so much, you should try tasting one. She remarked with a smile. I flung the boiling soup all over her and smacked her out of rage. But the stress made my pregnancy worse. And I was taken to the hospital that night. Barely making it to give birth. Because of Sophia's wounds. Eric was cruel to me. I spent five whole years in prison because he personally sent me there and even added some false charges. I never even saw the child I had risked my life to bring into the world. Eric replied. Bianca. You should be grateful Lucas doesn't look like you. Nothing had changed. But I recognized that everything had changed when I was released. Both Sophia and my beloved son. Whom I had battled so hard to bring into the world. Continued to despise me. They constantly looked at me with contempt. As though they had formed some sort of anti-Bianca pact. However. Eric didn't appear to be aware of it. Or maybe he was aware but didn't care. He only scowled a little and gave me a stern reprimand when I told him everything Sophia had done. Just like he used to do. You shouldn't have poured hot soup on Sophia regardless of what she did. After all. It was only a dog. Bianca. You left Sophia scarred. You have to take responsibility for your errors. Eric didn't accompany me home. I requested to go back to my family's former home instead. The house has already been sold to someone else, you can't go inside. He said. But I persisted. Just seeing it from the outside is fine. After a brief hesitation. Eric reluctantly consented. The house where he was forced to give up the woman he loved, my family's home, served as a reminder of his humiliation. He didn't want to see anything from my family again. Of course. Sophia was also opposed to going. She had been brought to my house as an illegitimate daughter by her mistress mother when she was a young child. But she was not even permitted to enter the front door. 
Lucas was the only person in the silent car who didn't care. He was telling Eric to speed up. Dad. Sophia promised to assist me in building my blocks today. Act quickly. Come on. Let's go home. Compared to me. They appeared to be more like a family. I was the discordant noise. An extraneous brushstroke in their lovely image. I didn't care. Though. I pushed the door open and got out of the car as soon as it reached the gate of my former residence. I was momentarily confused by the familiar yet unfamiliar environment. It seemed as though the door would open and Bruno's impatient voice would emerge over the intercom. Bianca. Why are you just standing at the door? Come in and have your dinner. But when I regained consciousness. I saw the dark. Empty house in front of me with no lights inside. Eric said from the private vehicle behind me. Get back in so we can go home. After a brief pause. I declared. I'm not turning back. I don't live there. Sophia's eyes welled up with tears. As I had anticipated. And she looked pathetic. Bianca. Are you saying this because of me? I apologize. I didn't intend to replace you. I've been staying at Eric's house because he just felt sorry for me. I can move out immediately if you don't like it. People would quickly comment. Sister. Stop it. If this flimsy attempt to play the victim were put online. The vibes of green tea are overwhelming. However. It appeared that Eric was unaware of it. And Lucas. Who had acquired all of Eric's faults. Also yelled at me. Are you going to stop? From the day you were released from prison. You have been disparaging Aunt Sophia. Isn't that sufficient? You should have been imprisoned because you caused Aunt Sophia's suffering. What gives you the audacity to insult her? At five. He is too young to fully comprehend. He spent a lot of time with Sophia and learned all the wrong lessons from Eric. Who was a bad role model. I forgave him liberally since I could see why he had behaved in this manner toward me. I can criticize you as well as I can criticize her. I added. Lucas. I can also strike you. Do you believe that I won't? I ultimately got what I wanted. I was abandoned. Everyone's ears were pained by Lucas's shrill. Piercing shouts during his fury. Eric even believed I was insane. Bianca. How could you have said that to Lucas? You must really relax. He remarked. He drove off with Sophia and Lucas. Leaving me standing there. After a few minutes of standing motionless. I awkwardly climbed over the gate and sneaked in via the unlocked first floor window. I navigated through the home using the light on my phone. As I had anticipated. It was a mess. They removed everything. And it was clear how quickly they packed everything away. I located my old room by going upstairs. The majority of the presents that my brother Bruno and my parents had purchased for me had been seized. As I expected. I discovered a substantial pile of objects concealed below the headboard. I discovered they were love letters I had written to Eric when I was a student. When I took them out. I paused silently. There were cash dollars tucked inside. My brother Bruno had left these for me. Bruno was unable to leave me enough money to get by since our family's bank accounts were frozen solid. He was forced to turn it all into cash and conceal it throughout the house in locations that the employees couldn't find. However, I didn't anticipate that he would conceal the cash within the romantic letters. I had to read all those letters again. From start to finish. 
with reluctance. Like a boomerang. The innocent emotions of a young girl now repeatedly pierced my heart. I cried in private. Even though I had given up on Eric. Ultimately. I tore everything apart with my own hands. As though I were erasing all of my previous emotions for Eric and left nothing in their wake. I wasn't stupid enough to sleep in a house that had been abandoned. I located a tiny motel in the city and spent the night there using the money Bruno left for me. I was momentarily taken aback when Eric called to inquire as to why I wasn't at the house. You climbed in to look for me? Unwelcome hope rushed through my chest. Even though I had no idea if he had noticed the torn love notes. Eric went on. You're coming home with me today to apologize to Lucas and Sophia. Before I could respond. He added. Bianca. What you said yesterday was absurd. Lucas can't hear you like that. He is your kid. I had to force myself to gulp the words back down after they rose to my throat. I silently smiled. Curling my lips. Don't you think Lucas looks more like Sophia's child than mine? Eric stopped. What do you mean? Let's get a divorce. Eric. I replied softly. Letting go of the tension in my chest as I spoke. As the lawyer drafts the divorce documents. Ask him to draft paperwork that ends the relationship as well. Lucas and you are no longer what I desire. I believed I had expressed myself rather well. Bianca. Stop saying things just to spite me. Was all Eric said. It's useless. I'd had my share of tantrums back when I was pursuing him. Because of Sophia. I even ignored him for days. But he showed no remorse. He seemed to be able to live even more easily without me. Ultimately. I was forced to swallow my pride and put up with my distaste for Sophia. I realized at that same instant that Eric didn't care if I was angry or not. He didn't care about anything I did. Even today. Suddenly. I didn't want to talk to Eric anymore. I just stated that I would sign the divorce documents as soon as the attorney had them ready. Then. Totally unconcerned by Eric's interrupted speech. I hung up. I was immediately stunned as the loudness in my ears subsided. It seemed as though I had suddenly forgotten my purpose for existing. Knock. Knock. The door was gently tapped twice. The innkeeper asked me whether I would like to stay longer. I gave a nod. I couldn't help but glance back when I heard the noise outside as I was heading downstairs to deal with the extension. The children were joyfully skipping along under the guidance of their parents. There are always a lot of kids around because there's a kindergarten nearby. The innkeeper explained. In the morning. It can be a little boisterous. I may give you a discount if it annoys you. That would be fantastic. I answered with a smile. I wouldn't have cared about saving a few dollars if I had been a pampered young woman. But right now it all looked like a passing fad. The innkeeper showed me the best food stalls on the local breakfast street and gave me a discount. The street was busy and exciting. With so many parents and students. My parents believed that street food was harmful back then. The only person who would smuggle me out to eat it was my brother Bruno. However. No one accompanied me there after I got married because Eric and Bruno had relocated overseas. On the advice of the innkeeper. I purchased a Chinese crepe. Maybe the stall owner grinned and said. Up early to drop off your child at school. Huh, because I was holding the crepe and looking so carefully at the kids walking past. My free hand instinctively went to my lower abdomen and gave it a light pat. I gave the stall owner a gentle smile. 
as I had nearly forgotten what it was like to carry Lucas five years ago. No kids. No marriage. I'm merely stopping by. An irate voice abruptly emerged from next to me before the stall owner could reply. Bianca. I looked across and saw Eric in his suit. His rucksack on his shoulders. Clutching Lucas's hand. The child scarlet. Incredulous eyes were staring up at me. Seeing Lucas's suffering gave me a sick sense of satisfaction. He hated me. Didn't he? He hated me. Didn't he? In his perspective. Was Sophia the only one who wished she were his biological mother? So why did he have such a hurt? Sad look on his face when I stated those words. However. I ignored Eric's inquiries and the pain in Lucas's eyes. I nodded at Eric icily. Fancy seeing you here. Taking Lucas to school. For once. His eyes expanded. As though he was unable to understand my lack of interest. For what reason would you say that? Are you against Lucas's existence? His biological mother is you. I must admit that I don't fully comprehend it myself. Eric was the one who consistently stated that he didn't want the baby inside of me during my pregnancy. Eric would have taken me to the hospital as soon as we found out we were pregnant and made me end it if it weren't for his family's pressure. How come I've turned into the antagonist who doesn't want Lucas? I laughed even harder at the look on Lucas's face. Why does he care what I say if he doesn't consider me to be his mother? If I call him my kid? Why does he care? Perhaps Lucas's pride was hurt by my smile. Abruptly. He wrenched his hand from Eric's grasp and yelled. You're not my mother. You're not worthy of it. Lucas turned and sprinted all the way into the school. He knocked a young girl over on the way. But he didn't stop to say sorry. He yelled. Watch where you're going, instead. He has been brought up to be a conceited and pampered child. Wholly unlike the child I had in mind during my pregnancy. He shouldn't be my child. Since he's starting to resemble Sophia from her early years, standing outside my door with her mother. Yelling at me and pointing out that I had taken her father. Eric grabbed my wrist as I turned to go. He gazed at me as if I were a stranger. Bianca. You should not do this. Lucas is going to get hurt. He had been anticipating your arrival. He often expressed his desire to visit you. I shook his hand away. Therefore. You should have informed him right away that he is Sophia's child. He wouldn't have had any expectations of me that way. I then interrupted Eric's attempt to clarify. I advised you to speak with a lawyer this morning about getting a divorce and ending our relationship. How has that progressed? For once. Eric was firm. He resisted accepting the divorce. He made a lot of justifications. Using his family. Lucas. And even the company's operations as cover. The company is experiencing too much activity. I have no time to handle this. I nodded with complete comprehension. It's okay. If you're willing to pay. I can find someone. You are aware that my family filed for bankruptcy. I have no extra cash to pay a lawyer. I only need the divorce papers. I don't need Lucas or any property. It's that simple. Eric's face wrinkled deeply as he gradually grew silent. Bianca. Is this really necessary? I'm prepared to work things out between us because I've already moved on from the past. Have you moved on? He can say that with ease. I haven't moved on. But he might have. 
I will never be able to look at Eric's face calmly again because of the scars on my arms and the five years I spent in prison. I was worried that I wouldn't be able to resist giving him a forceful slap. I turned to go with the now cold meal in hand. Grinning a little. After taking a few steps. I turned back to Eric and asked. What made you send Lucas to study here? Did you make the arrangement? A flicker of hope appeared in his eyes. As if I had reconsidered my decision to give up on Lucas. No. Sophia came up with the concept. Lucas shouldn't always be treated like a wealthy young master. She argued. And he needs to get tougher. When he noticed the derisive expression in my eyes. His words faltered. Eric. Are you going to? No. I don't mean to be critical of Sophia. It's totally up to your family how she sets things up for Lucas. I added. I just want to ask you this. If Lucas were really Sophia's biological child, would she send him to this ordinary school instead of one of those fancy bilingual preschools downtown that cost hundreds of thousands? The solution was clear. I know Sophia. And Eric knows her. So she wouldn't. She despises me. Everything associated with me. And me in particular because I took Eric away from her. How could Sophia ever truly feel anything for the walking embodiment of treachery? Lucas? She certainly never imagined that I would give up on Lucas so quickly. But her act of caring for him is just a ruse to make me feel disgusted. I am so worthless. For the sake of the man or the child. I will not fight her. I'll just decide to leave it all in silence. When I bit into the chili crepe I had purchased. It tasted bitter. It tasted absolutely awful. Bruno used to slip out of school to buy me street snacks. But I might never taste them again. All of a sudden. I missed them. Not only did five years of suffering break me. But it also broke Eric. He appeared to be going insane. In fact. He made me visit a psychiatrist. Nobody hates their own kid. Bianca. You must be sick. Eric threatened to bring my parents along. But I didn't want to go. Bianca. I managed to reverse your parents' case. I'll assist them in getting out of jail as long as you promise to receive therapy. Eric was the one who initially sentenced them to prison. Really? I questioned again. Glancing at him. He gave a nod. How absurd. I'm pleading with the very person who ruined everything. I did. However. Agree for my parents. Eric discovered a well-known psychiatrist in the city's south. Whose schedule was completely filled through the following year. Eric's efforts were the only reason I was able to secure an earlier appointment. Eric sat out in the hallway while I talked to the psychiatrist. He demanded that we be in his direct line of sight and that the door be left ajar. She's my wife. Eric said in response to the doctor's laughter when he asked why I needed to preserve the patient's privacy. I have to make sure she's safe. I would have been ecstatic to hear him recognize our relationship in such a way if this had occurred five years ago. It's unfortunate that I no longer care. It's fine. I'll soon be his ex-wife anyway. I said with a dismissive smirk. I looked innocently into Eric's eyes as he turned his head abruptly to face me. What's wrong? I didn't promise not to divorce you. I just said I would see a doctor. His face reddened instantly. He pressed his lips into a harsh, chilly line. He sat stiffly on the seat in the corridor and looked at me without blinking. After shrugging, the doctor replied. 
I think I understand why you want a divorce. I grinned without uttering a word. I guess I needed to vent to the psychiatrist about a lot of things. He also offered the following advice. I advise you to volunteer at an orphanage or other such organization. If you really are unable to accept your own child. You might be able to accept your own child after interacting with other adorable ones. Eric concurred with the doctor's recommendation. He even called his assistant on the way to pick up Lucas to ask about all the city's orphanages. I sat in the rear seat and looked out the window at the shifting landscape. I had him drop me off far away rather than waiting with him at the school entrance. I'll make arrangements for Lucas to change schools. Was all that Eric said after opening his mouth. You were correct. He ought to attend a better one. I didn't answer. And I didn't stop while I was leaving. Eric had set me up with an orphanage. But I didn't go there either. Rather. I went in search of a woman named Aunt Eva at the innkeeper's recommendation. She had created a makeshift orphanage in her tiny, claustrophobic house, providing refuge to over a dozen destitute kids. The youngest went to a local kindergarten, while the eldest was in high school. The youngest, it turned out, was the small girl Lucas had run into in his rage. She was particularly adorable, with a round face and large, sparkling eyes. Eva responded. As the children grow up, they all need to go to school. In order to pay for their education, I had to tighten my belt. I smiled and gave the young girl a head pat before asking Eva if I may stay and assist with the kids' care. She agreed. Of course. But her smile was clumsy and sorrowful. I don't really have any money to pay you. All the money goes to feeding them and paying for their education. I informed her I didn't require payment and shook my head. I developed a deeper affection for these kids the more time I spent with them. While lavish wealth may produce spoiled brats like Lucas. Selena and other well-behaved children can be raised on pickles and porridge. Eva invited me to attend the kindergarten parents' meeting in Selena's class because she was too busy looking after the children to go. I accepted the challenge. Selena and Lucas happened to be classmates. And they were seated extremely close to one another. Lucas's eyes opened. And he sprung from his seat when he saw me entering the classroom with Selena's hand in mine. It was true that he had been brought up to be erratic and disorderly. He rushed Selena and shoved her. Selena started crying as soon as she hit the ground and landed hard on her backside. Thief! Lucas yelled at her. His hands on his hips. Selena wiped away her tears and got to her feet. I'm not. The other kids came around to watch. And the other parents all turned to look because of the ruckus. But instead of revealing what Selena had stolen, Lucas only referred to her as a thief. He said haughtily, You're a thief. A dirty little thief. The fact that Lucas was so young, wearing designer clothing and shoes, and that the man who was attending the meeting with him appeared to be a successful professional. Despite the parents' ignorance, they tacitly supported Lucas, reprimanding Selena and even blaming me for allegedly failing to raise the youngster appropriately. I said nothing. You say she's a thief? I asked Lucas sharply after helping Selena get up and dusting off her clothes. Specifically, what did she take from you? As I reprimanded Lucas. His eyes became crimson. And tears began to fall down his cheeks. But he bit his lip obstinately. She knows exactly what she stole from me. Perhaps I was too severe. The other parents came forward and advised me to talk to the child in a kinder manner. 
Some of them even spoke harsher when they saw Lucas crying. How can you take it out on someone else's kids when you didn't raise your own? Your child will probably end up just like you, bad. They persisted in their criticism while utterly disregarding Selena's sobbing and denials. Saying. No. Everything wasn't stolen by me. The teacher and Eric concluded their talk and went into the classroom just as the ruckus peaked. What's going on here, the instructor inquired. The parents soon began to gripe. Their expressions displaying rage as they looked at me all the time. I even got Eric's attention. And his face changed a little. Lucas's smug expression likely resulted from his belief that his father, who usually showered him with affection, would support him this time as well. You're a robber. Now. Lucas. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Lucas stopped. He glanced around. Making sure that neither Eric nor I were supporting him. His rage made his voice harsh. I'm not going to apologize. She is a thief. What did she steal from you? Under Eric's intense interrogation, Lucas lost his composure. He sobbed and said, My mother was taken by Selena. She should be my mother. She is assisting Selena. But why? There was a startled quiet in the room as he spoke. The parents looked at each other awkwardly. And nobody spoke for a long time. They most likely realized how much Lucas and I looked alike at this point. They slunk back to their seats. Each one closing their mouths awkwardly. I didn't feel anything when the youngster cried. And I didn't even look at him. After wiping away her tears. Selena asked if I would like to go console Lucas. It's okay. Bianca. She continued. I am able to go alone to the parents' meeting. I grinned and gave her a head pat. No need. I'll stay with you. After that. Eric invited Lucas to come over and apologize. Under Eric's pressure. The child could only bite his lip. Lower his head. And apologize to Selena. Even if his eyes were still red and he appeared hesitant. After forgiving him freely. Selena couldn't help but make fun of Lucas. You're so cruel all the time. I assumed you had no mother. It turns out that your mother is Bianca. But why do you not resemble her at all? Lucas was so angry that he was about to cry once more. Selena happened to harbor resentment. And children who are abandoned by their parents are always sensitive and mature beyond their years. I couldn't help but grin at Lucas's pathetic face. After a period of silence. Even Eric said. I'm sorry. Eric's eyes were heavy and worried when I looked up again. Lucas wasn't raised nicely by me. I apologize for the way he turned out. I don't need an apology from you. He is your son. I packed Selena's bag as the parents' conference was coming to a close. Lucas rushed over. Grabbed my sleeve. And yelled. Mom, as we were leaving the classroom. I hesitated for a second. You've thought I'm someone else. I'm not your mother. I left the kindergarten with Selena after gently brushing his hand away. Oblivious to the waning in his eyes. After five years of waiting. I finally got Lucas to call me mom. But I didn't experience the happiness I had hoped for. Before he stood up for Sophia and gave me a contemptuous look. I had hoped for this moment. However. The child I had carried for ten months had already died for me on the day I was freed from prison when I witnessed him standing up for Sophia and responding to me on her behalf. After that. 
It appeared that Lucas had taken a shine to Selena and me. Lucas always stayed close to Selena whenever I went to pick her up from school. His eyes would light up when he spotted me. But he would turn his head away as if nothing had happened. Just to continue looking at me in private. I pretended not to see him. Utterly disregarding Lucas's expectant expressions. Selena. Who was often grumbling about how annoying Lucas was. Also didn't enjoy it when I picked her up anymore. Before long. Though. She began telling me what Lucas had said. He informed me that he would no longer be able to see me because he was moving to a different school. He requested that I give you the Mother's Day card that we created in class. Lucas claimed that he wanted to provide it to you after spending a lot of time preparing it. In addition, he informed me that Aunt Sophia had left the house and asked me whether I would be returning. Selena looked at me naively and blinked. Bianca. Are you leaving? I shook my head and grinned. No. I'm not leaving. I didn't want to go back to that house. Even because they are no longer discussed. Previous events do not necessarily indicate that they never occurred. I haven't worn short sleeves since. In part because I'm afraid of them and in part because I don't want to. Even if it's 37 degrees outdoors today. I don't want to reveal the scars since they are too deep and numerous. My lawyer and I were working on a draft divorce agreement. But Eric was never cooperative. He kept stating he needed more time to go over the terms. So I had to wait for his response. I was asked what to do by the lawyer. I gave it some thought. Took the printed draft. And went to meet him. Fortunately. Sophia was also present. She stood looking at me with narrowed eyes and a lady of the home air. What's wrong? Bianca? Why have you returned so abruptly? Are you in need of anything? She turned out to be my father's illegitimate daughter. And I had a similar conversation with Sophia a long time ago when I first learned that Eric liked her. I was so envious that I wanted her to break up with Eric. I never imagined that she would be calling me delusional and making fun of me one minute. Then be crying and splattering coffee all over herself. I was taken aback. When I glanced around. I saw Eric rushing in with a furious expression. Bianca. Don't take your spoiled brat attitude out on Sophia. I hadn't even had time to act yet. I was immediately accused of picking on Sophia. And she got her wish. Smiling triumphantly and snagging Eric's jacket. Eric has always favored Sophia. So I've always lost when it comes to her. She was never required to take any action. Eric would also accompany her. After all these years. I was confronted by Sophia once more. I looked down at the tea the maid had delivered. Grinning a little. I just wanted to see if you still have the nerve to wear short sleeves. Sophia immediately went crazy. Just as I had predicted. Her voice was sharp and high-pitched as she hurled the boiling tea at me. You believe things will get better for you. Did the individuals I dispatched fail to destroy your hand? I had a sneaking suspicion. With well-defined goals. The ladies in prison came directly at me to slit my arms with sharpened toothbrush handles. Sophia most likely organized all of those. She decided to get back at me indirectly since she was afraid that Eric might notice something when I was released. And she didn't dare ruin my face directly. She must have given me explicit instructions to ensure that I endured a hundred times as much suffering as she did. My body is scarred as a result. And I don't even want to think about those five gloomy years in prison. I didn't react the same way I had five years prior. 
rashly lunging at Sophia to make her pay. Even though the hot tea burned my arm and the side of my face. Giving my skin a bright, painful scarlet. I just gazed at her calmly. A small smile curling my lips. Sophia. Sometimes people turn into exactly what they hate the most. She stopped. The door exploded open the next second. When he saw my state. Eric hurried in. His eyes somewhat widening. Sophia. Why did you? Sophia frantically tried to explain herself. But Eric ignored her. As Sophia sobbed. He simply told the maid to get a doctor right away and began putting ice on my swollen. Red skin while attempting to clarify that it wasn't deliberate and that I had only been attempting to win her sympathies. Eric raised his head. Are you saying that Bianca poured boiling water on herself just to put on a show for me? Sophia nodded right away. But Eric laughed icily. Bianca is not required to. Are you aware that she requested a divorce from me? She has no justification for playing the victim in order to keep me. Sophia's expression went white. So you think I'm bullying her on purpose? Isn't that exactly what's happening? Eric gave me the same impatient glance that he had been giving me for the past ten years. But this time it was directed at the Sophia he had always loved. Not at me. Sophia's lips quivered. And she struggled for a long time to find the right words to answer. I felt nothing except amusement. She is exactly like me in those days. Similarly stupid. Equally influenced by a man's feelings. And ultimately left with nothing except the bitter disappointment of a relationship that never really existed. The living room's ancient clock marked the passing of time with a gentle chime. It was Lucas's time to return home. Lucas's eyes brightened. And he said. Mom, with excitement. As if no one had warned him that he would find me at home. I didn't answer him. As usual. I'm only here today to give you the draft of the divorce agreement because you've never found the time to look at it. I said. Removing my hand from Eric. Please get in touch with my lawyer online if you have any questions. I'm not going back. I only have one life. After all. I'm worried someone might lose their mind if I return a couple more times. Sophia's hands quivered with anger at my scathing remarks. What do you mean by that? I gave a small smile. Not a thing. It's not about you. So don't get it wrong. I said to Lucas. Oh. And one more thing. As I turned around. The children in the orphanage are really sweet. And I've spent a lot of time with them. I apologize. But my terms are still the same because I still can't stand Lucas. I don't want anything from you or your family. Lucas. All I want is a divorce. Lucas's face suddenly lost its color. Being rejected by his own mother must have been an unbearable blow to him. My words appeared to astound Eric as well. I avoided him when he reached out to stop me. He paused for a long moment before speaking in a broken voice. Bianca. This isn't fair to the child. He's only five years old. Too young to understand anything. I responded. Everything he knew about me was based on what Eric and Sophia had told him. They detested me back then. What kind of words may they have said? However. Nothing is fair in our world. Who will treat me fairly for the five years I was incarcerated if you expect me to treat Lucas fairly? I turned to face Eric. His gaze was fixed solely on me. And for the first time. It wasn't constantly occupied by Sophia's image. 
His speech sounded gruff. And his eyes grew dimmer. Bianca. Do you really have to be this heartless? I bowed my head and let out a little laugh. I'm still learning about your rejection of me in the past. Therefore. This seems callous to you. Lucas abruptly snapped out of it as I turned to go. His face flushed from the stress. And he clung to my knees while sobbing violently. Mom. Mom. I was mistaken. Now I'll pay attention to you. I swear. I was instructed to say those things by Aunt Sophia. Mom. I apologize. Don't be furious. Please. Please don't abandon me. Mom. I furrowed my brow a little at the piercing sound of his sobs. I firmly removed his arms from me and strode quickly in the direction of the door. Lucas was trying to follow me as I shut the door. But he was sobbing so much that he stumbled and fell to the ground. He screamed and again called for me. He was pushed away even by Eric. Who attempted to assist him? Leave. I want my mother to assist me. Return my mother to me. The screams were muted as the door closed. I breathed out slowly. When Eric sent me to prison five years ago, he was undoubtedly positive that I would return to him after my release. Regardless of how much I detested him. Because I loved him and my child was his. Eric was mistaken. Though. I didn't really love him or the child in the end. After watching the story above. Do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. If you enjoyed our video. Please like. Subscribe. And share our channel. That all about today's stories. See you next time.